Hello, Kyle Horton here speaking on behalf of the University of Connecticut as an undergraduate in the Chemical Engineering Department. Today I'll be talking about catalytic activity and stability of tungsten oxide electrocatalyst for fuel cell applications based on the abstract by the same name by two researchers from Florida's A&M and State University. Here's a brief overview of what I'll be talking about today. First, I'll go over the general components of a proton exchange membrane fuel cell and discuss platinum's role as an electrocatalyst. Then, I'll get into the main focus of the video and talk about tungsten oxide's role in supporting the platinum electrocatalyst, production of the platinum tungsten oxide composite, and a description of the advantages of having this kind of electrocatalyst. Finally, I'll mention some applications of fuel cells so that you have an idea of how important this stable catalyst really is. And then I'll wrap it up with a brief summary and list of sources. The proton exchange or polymer exchange membrane fuel cell operates best on hydrogen, but it is difficult to harvest pure hydrogen, so other fuel cells are developed that can convert fossil fuels into a hydrogen-rich stream and deal with the excess gas waste. Other fuel cells, such as the direct methanol fuel cell, operate on the fossil fuel directly. Hydrogen splits at the anode where the electrons are sent through the electric circuit. The electrons and oxygen atoms then combine with hydrogen ions at the cathode forming water. An advantage of a proton exchange membrane fuel cell is that they operate at low temperatures around 50 to 100 degrees Celsius. Platinum is a valued catalyst for its ability to initiate chemical reactions at relatively low temperatures. The most commercial form of a fuel cell electrocatalyst is platinum particles on porous carbon. One problem with platinum is that it is extremely expensive. It is a goal of engineers to decrease the amount of platinum used in fuel cells while maximizing the effect of platinum that they do have to use. Another setback is that platinum is extremely prone to corrosion and weakens during its continuous use. In, in an effort to prevent the degradation of platinum, tungsten oxide replaces carbon as a more stable support structure. In order to function as a catalyst, the tungsten oxide nanostructure is impregnated with platinum, as shown in the picture to the right, and done by a method described in the next Researchers from the Indian Institute of Technology in Madras published a description of their method of synthesizing a platinum tungsten oxide composite. The tungsten oxide nanorods are formed by first stirring phosphotungstic acid into a methanol solution. The colloid that formed filled an alumina template membrane and was then polished with sandpaper. The substance was then left to dry for one hour at 95 degrees Celsius. Further formation of the nanorods was achieved by calcination at 873 Kelvin. Platinum was loaded onto the tungsten oxide nanorods by mixing the nanorods into a solution of aqueous hexachloroplatinic acid at room temperature. After the mixture was evaporated to dryness, the material was reduced in the hydrogen environment at 623 Kelvin for three hours, at which time the platinum tungsten oxide nanorods were... Transmission electron microscopy shows that platinum is well dispersed all over the tungsten oxide nanotube, as shown in the photo to the right. The nanorods also have the useful characteristic of oxidizing carbon monoxide, reducing the emissions of poison gases from direct methanol fuel cells. The platinum particles on the nanorod are about 3 to 4 nanometers large, and in the hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell, platinum particle size should be about 3 nanometers to optimize catalytic. The tungsten oxide nanorod shows significant promise for the support of platinum on fuel cell electrocatalyst for a few reasons. In comparison to carbon supports, the tungsten oxide support structure is far more stable and durable than the carbon support structure. In direct methanol fuel cells, the platinum and tungsten oxide nanorods showed twice as much catalytic activity as did the commercial platinum carbon electrocatalyst. And even without a methanol fuel, the platinum tungsten oxide electrocatalyst showed much more catalytic activity than the platinum carbon electrocatalyst with the same amount of platinum. Because of the oxophilic nature of tungsten oxide, the nanorods are able to absorb intermediates in the fuel cell reactions, keeping the surface of the platinum clean. <laughs> this keeps the platinum from corroding so that not only does the tungsten oxide supported electrocatalyst exhibit more initial activity, but it will last longer than the carbon supported catalyst. Here are just a few applications of fuel cells so you can see how important this research really is. The average fuel cell car operates at about 64% fuel efficiency, while a gasoline powered car only operates at about 20% fuel efficiency. Electric power vehicles can run up to about 67% efficiency, but the power most likely comes from a combustion power plant which brings the total efficiency down to 26%.
Engineers are considering a broad spectrum of sizes for the applications of fuel cells. Large fuel cells could function as power plants that provide electricity for whole cities. Small fuel cells can be used for personal devices such as laptop computers or phones that have a wide variety of functions. The fuel cell can provide a long-lasting source of power when one needs to go for days without recharging. Here's just a short summary of what I've discussed. The climax of fuel cell research is the development of fuel cell components that are efficient, durable, and cost-effective. A method of synthesis has already been developed to effectively produce platinum tungsten oxide nanorods. And finally, production of platinum tungsten oxide shows a promise because of the product's durability and superior catalytic activity in comparison to the commercial platinum carbon electric catalyst. Here are the sources that aided in my research of this subject. I hope that you found the presentation informative and can now see why tungsten oxide shows promise in becoming a very important component in fuel cells.